So the next portion of my Zinc 7000 board that I've been building is to get HDMI working. Uh, and I've been successful with that. And I am going to talk through in this video really the basic pieces of that. Uh, start out here with the picture of the PCB in Easy EDA Pro. But what's relevant here would be coming out of my Zinc. I come up here to where the HDMI connector is. And I've mounted it bottom side just to facilitate the routing the way that I brought this up and I run it through this uh, TPD-12S-016. Uh, and then there's some miscellaneous you know, passive components that go with that, but really that's about it. So I'm taking signal straight out, working through this TPD uh, into my HDMI output. With that, here's a picture of my board assembled and running. I'm just sitting at not my normal work workbench, but just my, my desk, my normal uh, work desk here. But what you're seeing in the picture is just uh, I've populated the upper right I.O. connector uh, just for a future expansion. I put a few other miscellaneous components in. I have put uh, the, the corner pegs in, I guess, the PCB so that it stands up off, off the, the desk. Uh, and then, uh, of course, USB-C is coming in, in the lower left, and that's for programming uh, UART and power at this point. And that all has continued to work well for me. On my schematic, I have the HDMI, and here you can see, again, this is just the connector that I have. I'm bringing a bunch of signals in directly from the zinc, and then you can see there's some other signals that come in uh, into this uh, TPD and out through it back over to this uh, connection over to the right. And this TPD-12S016, someone had recommended that at some point uh, to consider putting that into the design, and I had done that. And here's the, the data sheet for that. So it's I2C level shifting, buffer, 12-channel ESD protection, current uh, limit load switch. Uh, so that is what this component is right here. Uh, if I go over then to my processing system, uh, this would be banks 34 and 35. And really what I'm working with right now is the transmit. So all of these, that say HDMI, TX, and there's one other signal over here coming off of bank 34. Later, I, I might work on bringing in HDMI, and I do have the board routed to support that through that upper right uh, expansion connector. But I have this HDMI uh, transmit for the HPD, and I'm not super familiar, familiar with all the HDMI specs and, and uh, details, but uh, these are the signals I'm using. So I'm outputting that, and then you can see over here I've got the I2C signals, there's data signals, clock, uh, and basically then I am using those as I get into the different uh, tools like Vivado and uh, Vitas. Vitus. Uh, so maybe I'll jump over to Vivado. And in Vivado, I have set up a constraints file. And this is what's in the constraints file at the moment. Uh, so I'm specifying the differential pair for the T TMDS clock. And I'm going to toggle back and forth a little bit here. But uh, if that would be my clock here, clock positive negative. So these pins uh, C1817, like you can see there. And then I grabbed the uh, three differential pairs for data, you know, and again, these are coming from data zero, data one, data two. And then I have this HPD and I come over here and that's on this H15. And so I've set that accordingly. And then finally, there's this uh, I2C, which I have on B1617. And so I set up that accordingly. Uh, then I went into the block diagram, and in the block diagram, this is what I have. Now, I had done some of this way back when, I don't know, maybe it's been a couple of years ago, where uh, I had built in Vivado, in this block diagram, the ability to output. I was using a Digilent RDZ7, uh, outputting HDMI on that. And I was running a, uh, oh, basically an FPGA-based 16-bit processor that 
um, kind of was built off of uh, Ben Eater's work on his uh, eight bit, but it was a sixteen bit version that I built in F in the FPGA, and then uh, really in VHDL, and then was taking that and displaying it on the HDMI output. Anyways, I've got old videos if you want to uh, track that down or, or let me know, and I can get you the links. But I stripped all of that out. I basically took that project, I upgraded it to the latest uh, Vovato 2024.2, and I took out anything and everything that had to do with the actual 16-bit uh, VHDL processor. And what's left here is, is really just the HDMI output. And so I'll zoom into to this, but basically if I just start off in the upper left of it, you know, I'm using my Zinc processing system. Uh, so that just is set up to match what I've shown in previous videos in the last uh, video, for example, when I was doing uh, DDR testing. But then there's some other components here. There's an AXI memory interconnect. There's this AXI uh, interconnect, which apparently is now discontinued. It shows discontinued. I don't know if there's a replacement for that or a, a different way to do what I'm doing here, but I didn't at at the moment want to mess with it. I just wanted to use this project as it was. Uh, and then you can see there's some other components over here. There's a dynamic clock generator. And there is an AXI video direct memory access, video timing controller, streamed video out. And then I also have an uh, AXI GPO uh, for that HPD signal. Um, but this is getting me all of my, my output that I, I should be, be needing here. And really, again, this is just leveraging that project I had a couple of years ago, and that project started with the Digilent. They have a sample project for the RDZ7 uh, that is to do HDMI output or video output on it, and that's what I started with. So uh, this is just an evolution from that. I started with their sample project, which was helpful, kind of tweaked it to meet my needs, and now here I'm upgrading it and using it on my own board, which is, is pretty pretty interesting. So from all that, I, I of course generated the, the platform or hardware and I went over to Vitus. And if I go to Vitus for a second, I know this isn't real large, uh, but uh, I'll try to zoom in here the best I can. But in this, uh, just in short, there's a lot of stuff here that uh, for now you can ignore. But basically this has, has the, the code in it right now that is going to generate my HDMI output. And for now, I'm just going to generate the output I used in that 16-bit processor work I did. It's going to show me registers and values, what's going on in that processor as it runs, which again, the processor's not here, but the output is, is going to still output. And that, that'll tell me, can I write to, A, can I generate the appropriate HDMI signals? And then can I write something to the screen? So if I run this, uh, which is what's currently running on my board, you then see the output that is sitting here in this picture. And so it is successfully driving HDMI, and uh, this, is a, this is all a content that I'm generating through this code here in uh, Vitus. And basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to read a whole bunch of GPIO information from the 16-bit the VHDL processor that would be running, which I, again, don't have it running, but then it takes those values and displays it kind of in an LED bar graph type of format, kind of a retro uh, type of uh, look. Again, matching some of the work I was doing back at that time with 8-bit, 16-bit uh, processors uh, from the ground up. So the end, end result of all this, though, is the board I've got appears that that simple circuit is working. Uh, I am using the, the block design that apparently is still working fine, and I can now programmatically uh, generate and create output for this HDMI output. So uh, that's kind of the short version of it. If anybody wants more details, you know, reach out to me. But uh, I think all I'm trying to do in this for now is just test, can I generate the HDMI signal and I, can I get output to it you know, to see if the physical... PCB and the circuit design works, and I'm gonna say yes, it looks like it's working just fine. Um, now I probably can go into that block design and find newer, better ways of doing the same stuff, um, try to learn what uh, Digilent is doing in some of their, their sample. There are a few components here, for example, on Vitus. Uh, there is, I 
think there's this dynamic clock. And that is from Digilent, this component here. So it's a dynamic frequency generator. There's also a display control. So this is a Sam, uh, Sam B. Bob Rowitz. Uh, it looks like uh, he wrote some of this or she wrote some of this for the Digilent display controller driver. And I'm just leveraging that driver for now. And I've not looked through what all is involved in this, uh, and, and nor do I really have the interest in doing that right now. I just want to see if I can get HDMI output, and, and this little library is helping. Uh, so that is where I'm going to wind down on this one. I think um, that leaves a couple of other areas, three areas left, SD card, uh, USB host, or that USB Phi, and then uh, Ethernet. Uh, so those will be my next uh, few few things to try to tackle. But HDMI output is, is great. So now I can start rendering something along with my serial debug output and uh, leverage this hardware.